The Subaru Outback is basically a wagon version of Subaru's midsize sedan, the Legacy, but with a higher ride height and off-road styling cues. Like all Subarus, the Outback has standard all-wheel drive. The Subaru Outback has been a popular SUV alternative for years, but that doesn't mean the cars haven't had some flaws. For one, rear seat room has been tight, fuel economy hasn't been terrific, and the cars have been a handful in emergency situations as the tail slides out. Subaru has attempted to address these flaws in this 2010 Outback redesign. Stability control is now standard. There's a lot more room in the rear seat. Plus, Subaru went to a CVT, or continuously variable transmission, in an attempt to improve fuel economy. So did the changes Subaru make to the Outback improve emergency handling or fuel economy? We'll tell you how the Outback compares to other cars as we put it through more than 50 tests here at our track. The Outback has a comfortable and compliant ride. It's really impressive when the roads get very bad, like in the spring when all the potholes come out. The Outback just soaks that stuff up. As far as handling goes, it's pleasant to drive, but there's a bit of a disappointment here. Steering feel, it doesn't really convey as much feedback as you'd like from the road. Not that it's hard to drive, but it certainly isn't sporty. As for acceleration, zero to 60 miles per hour takes a leisurely 10.7 seconds. That's slow. If you want more power, you can get a six cylinder. It's much faster, but you're going to pay for that at the pump. Generally, the Outback's pretty quiet inside. Road noise is well subdued, but say you want to keep up with traffic or maintain speed on a hill. The CVT holds the revs high, and you hear the unique flat four guttural sound come out. It's not all that pleasing. The Outback has all the modern safety technologies you'd expect traction control, anti-lock brakes, stability control, they're all standard. Subaru also claims that its standard all-wheel drive is a safety feature. Now, all-wheel drive is great if you live where it snows a lot and you need to get to the top of a big hill, or even for off-roading. But there's a lot more to safety, and we found a problem. In our avoidance maneuver test, the car can only achieve a speed of 48 and a half miles an hour. And at speeds over that, the car had trouble. Also, if you're going too fast on a curve and try to slow down, the tail can slide out and the stability control is late to intervene. That can all be a bit scary. In our braking test, the Outback took 136 feet to stop in the dry, 156 to stop in the wet. These are decent numbers, not the shortest, but not that bad either. The Outback does very well in crash tests. The dummies are well protected, and the Outback is an insurance institute for highway safety top safety pick. It's pretty easy to see out of the Outback. There's big glass all around. The pillars, they're moderate in width. There's large side mirrors. Really, the only obstruction of note is the big rear head restraints. But since the rack window's so big, that's easy to see out of too. As for the headlights, our test found that low beam distance is short, and there's a distinct cutoff. That makes the distance even shorter on rolling hills. A big Outback improvement is fuel economy. We got 24 miles per gallon overall, 16 in the city, 32 on the highway. That's really impressive for a car this size with all-wheel drive. Things are pretty nice inside of the Outback. Interior plastics, they're nicely grained, although the dashboard, it's hard to the touch. It isn't padded. Controls are basically straightforward. The radio's up high in the dash. Everything's simple. There's a couple little gripes, though. Some of the radio knobs, they're a bit small, and some are a far reach. Reading some of these controls, they're black labels on silver background. Contrast could be better. The front seats are soft and generally comfortable. The leather ones, they're more supportive than the cloth seats. One common complaint, though. The bottom cushion, it's somewhat on the short side. That limits thigh support. The Outback has an accommodating driving position. There's plenty of room. There's also a tilt and telescope steering wheel. It's pretty easy to get in and out of the Outback. There's a high roof line and big doors. Once you're in the back seat, you'll see literally one of the largest improvements in this car. There's plenty of room back here. Three adults can fit. The seat is comfortable. It even reclines. The Subaru has a roomy cargo area. There's a flat floor, and you can make an even larger space by folding down the back seats. One other nice touch Subaru throws in, they give you a place underneath the floor to stash the cargo cover. 
That way it's out of the way when you carry big loads and you don't lose it someplace in your garage. You'll see a lot of Outbacks with bikes or kayaks on the roof and the Outback comes with a clever roof rack system. When you haul stuff, you're gonna have these cross rails across the roof like this, but when you're not hauling things, you want them out of the way so you reduce wind noise. The Outback lets you do that really easily. You just pivot them around and they store along the sides. But you're limited to where you can tie things to this rack because you have a solid piece here and there's nothing here in the middle to lash to. If you're considering a Subaru Outback, it's a pretty nice car and it's scored well in our ratings. In fact, it's basically the only game in town for a mid-sized all-wheel drive family wagon. But there's a few other things to consider. Perhaps the strongest competition to the Outback comes from Subaru's own Forester, a small SUV. It has plenty of room and it costs a lot less money. You might also be looking at a Toyota Venza. It has plenty of room inside, but it doesn't ride as well as the Outback. You might also be considering a Volvo XC70. This luxury wagon costs quite a bit more money than an Outback, and it's not a better car. So the Subaru Outback has a whole lot going for it. It combines a roomy, well-finished interior with the traction of all-wheel drive, all with impressive fuel economy. 